Hello, I'm Ash Quigley, and this is the Take Back Your Mind series, the place where we hear real stories from insightful and inspiring individuals about how they have reclaimed their own minds and how they live life to its fullest. In these conversations, you'll hear from people across many different walks of life that share what it means to be human and how they navigate their inner and outer worlds with a little more ease and intention. Now, today we'll be joined by the pretty unique and unforgettable Mark Kluwer. For those of you who don't know, Mark is a former Wim Hof facilitator who these days spends his time creating and facilitating personal transformation experiences. He travels the country sharing his passions with people for the life-changing power of connection to themselves and to others, whether that's at his events, at festivals, corporate environments, or up at his incredible home at Elevated Springs. As many of you know, Mark is a very dear friend of mine and someone who I feel very fortunate to get to work with from time to time. I just love his down-to-earth nature, his no BS approach, and his open and honest, unwavering vulnerability, especially in a time when, unfortunately, many are still struggling to share. Even knowing Mark for a few years now, I absolutely learn something new from him each and every time that we speak. So I'm really looking forward to today's chat. Let's get into it. So welcome, Mark. It is wonderful to have you here as always and chat to you. Um, welcome to Take Back Your Mind. Thank you, Ashen. <laughs> it's great to see you, mate. I've missed your, your face. Huh? Thank your you. I've missed yours. Face. I've missed for yours. Some, for, for some months now, mate. But anyway, it's great to actually have a good chat with you today, Ash. Legend. <laughs> Thanks, Mark. Um, so it's take back your mind being what it is and the theme around, you know, mental health and looking after ourselves. I like to do a bit of a check in with our guests to start um, on a scale of one to 10. If you were to say today where one is that you're feeling pretty flat, tired, 10 is that you're really energized and motivated and feeling good. Where, where do you reckon you're at today and why? Well, probably five, six which is, uh, and why, the reason is I suppose I'm just still searching, uh, Ash. I'm just going to move that. I've got a little glove hand. You know those little glove white hands? It's actually, I'm just going to put that out the way with a mouse or a mouse hand. Um, yeah, <clears throat> I'm feeling, um, I don't know, I, I, things are coming up, you know, all the time. I still, still, you know, am I doing the right thing? You know, there's self-doubt that comes in every day. Um, and I think that... Um, we're only human and I've got to, you know, allow for that too. I mean, I can't keep saying that I'm going to be, you know, just for the sake of this interview, I'm going to say, look, I'm 10 because I'm not, mate. And that's not reality. And I think that we need to, you know, for all of us, we need to have something that's attainable that we can't always be at 10. We can try. Our goal can be 10, but, you know, um, you know I'm about five or six, I reckon. Mm. I'll say six. Hmm. Thank you. Absolutely. I know. I think we can all fall into that trap from time to time where we think we always need to be a 10. And if we're not, something is inherently wrong. But that's mm. just being a human, right? It's all swings and roundabouts. Yeah, exactly, mate. Yeah, no. I'm just, sorry, Ash, also, we haven't had sun for a few days and I'm pretty much, you know, one of those. I lo love the sun. And so it's been quite dull and overcast. You know, we're, we're off grid here, Ash. And we've had the generator on nearly every day, you know, topping the batteries up, you know. So, um, yeah, I'm probably a bit of like a solar battery a bit, mate, too, you know. Yeah. Vitamin D. Absolutely. I know mm. myself, I've been up in the moon boot for the last week or so and I haven't been outside and I'm really noticing it now. I'm, I'm the exact same. I, I said today, even though the weather isn't great, I'm, I'm making a pact with myself to go and actually sit outside because it's not, it's not not normal. It's not natural to to be cooped up indoors all day, and it does. It really does affect your mind state, doesn't it? Yeah, it does, mate. But why did you consider this, mate? You've got a moon boot on. Why don't you buy a sun boot? <laughs> huh? That might be that might be better, hey? <laughs> Wise words. Wise words. There you go. 
Now, yeah. I've known you a really long time now, um, but for those who might be listening or watching along to this who may never have come across the wonder that is Mark Clewer before, can you tell us a little bit more about you and I guess your journey to, to this point? What have some been some of the pivotal moments that have led you to this moment right now? Well, thank you, Ash. Look, basically, 2016, I was 50 years old and I was uninspired, you know. I was looking after myself physically, you know, training, always training, going to the gym, eating good food, um, great family, you know, my wife, supportive of my adult daughters, you know, real, really, you know, enjoyed family life. But there was still something missing, Ash, you know, and... You know, my favourite days of the week were Friday afternoon, Saturday and Sunday. And then by Sunday afternoon, I think oh, I've got to go back to work again. So here I'm at 50. I, I own a building company with my brother in Melbourne. I'm a plumber by trade. Um, and like that, I had that business for 30 years, 20, between 25, 30 years. And, and I was uninspired. I was just ticking the boxes, Ash. And then in 2016, it's interesting, Ash, when things happen, these pivotal times in our life, it's like a limited liminal space. And I remember um, it was uh, August 2016. I had the opportunity to go to a uh, a Wim Hof retreat. He came; it was coming to Australia, and I heard about this three days prior or four days prior to the event. And I remember when I was told this at the gym I was training at at the time, and um, and I said to the fellow who's training me, my mate who owned the gym there, Dave O'Brien. And um, I said, Dave said, you know, Wim Hof's coming to Australia. And uh, I said, well, I've got to go to this. He said, well, yeah, there's a waiting list. There's 70 people waiting list, you know. So I thought, oh, shit. But I knew I had to go to this. And it's interesting, Ash, how, you know, life, life presents these times or these passages or door opening doors. And I've, and since this, time um since 2016 i've always been aware of these little doors that open up but before then i reckon i was i was the goldfish mate i was the goldfish and these doors were opening up but i didn't seem to step through them because i for 50 years i've been doing something for so long i was in autopilot a bit but i was uninspired you know and um a month earlier I'm just going to go back. So a month early in 2000, uh, sorry, 2016, in July, I had never heard of Wim Hof. So a month before August, I had heard about Wim Hof coming to Australia. I actually had uh, never uh, heard of this person, only from a mate of mine, a good mate of mine was like a brother to, uh, to, to me, um, and he worked for my, with my building company, and he suffered mental illness. And uh, he said, uh, Kim, great fella, Kim. And Kim said to me, Mark, have you watched this crazy Dutchman, what he's doing, you know, on YouTube? And uh, firstly, when he said crazy Dutchman, well, that ticked the boxes straight away because my father's Dutch and I've got crazy Dutch uncles. So I knew exactly what that humour was like. And I love that humour. But it was also the extreme stuff he was doing, Ash, you know, running through the Arctic Circle in minus 40 with a pair of Crocs on. Now, minus 40 is bad enough, but to wear Crocs is pretty average, mate. You know, they're, they're not much of a... Oh, I shouldn't say that because a bit of a fashion statement now, mate. But um, and also running that the, the through the the desert in extreme temperatures, sixty plus degrees, you know, and not having food or water. And so those, so you know, I was drawn to that. So here is a month before he comes to Australia. I've heard all of a sudden on a weekend. Have you heard of Wim Hof? Have you go and look at this crazy Dutchman? So I, I remember spending that weekend looking at stuff, YouTube, and looking at all these things that he was doing. And, um, and I was drawn to that physicality. I, you know, I was drawn to physicality through my life, you know, and, and my sport and, um, and how I could push my body mentally and, 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 um, and oh, sorry, physically and mentally. But see, um, I, that's what I thought I needed, but it wasn't that, mate. And this was the part that was missing, yeah? I was yang and I love being in yang, but I didn't have enough yin and I didn't understand all that stuff. You know, I just, just, I knew a little bit about what it was doing um, and I was learning about that, but I still wasn't fully vested in that, you know? And so um, I remember saying in, on that, in that weekend in July, it was Sunday. I said to my wife, I said to my wife, Julie, 
I said, Julie, I'm going to meet this fella. I have to meet this fella. So how's that? So a month later in August, I'm at the gym and I hear that Wim Hof's coming to Australia. I needed a change. I didn't know. And as I said, I was drawn to uh, the physicality. And then um, I couldn't get, and I tried everything then. I thought, okay, this door's open for me. I'm going to try whatever I can to go to this and see what happens. And in the end, I have to a number of phone calls because um, I remember after the training session on that Friday, the event was the next Wednesday. And uh, <clears throat> I trained and I, I got, got back to work and I'm, I'm in a box gutter, standing in a box gutter. It's pissing in rain, yeah, and I'm in, in North Melbourne. And I spoke to the, the, um, the organiser of the event and um, he said, look, Mark, you know, we've got 70 waiting lists. He said, will you come at the last, could you come at the last minute? I said, yeah, I can. I'll do anything to this. You know, I, want, I need to do this, you know. And um, anyway, so I get a call Monday night and um, <clears throat> I get a call Monday night and he said, look, and I recognised the number and I was pretty excited. And he said, look, I've run 40 people and uh, no one's answered their phone. Now, how's this? I, have a, I had a building company, 24-hour maintenance plumbing business as well with my brother. And so I always had the bloody phone on. And so I was always interrupted, you know, with this bloody phone. Um, but this call was a cracker, mate. And I remember I said, I said, bloody oath, I want to come. And then when I put the phone down, I went, oh, shit, what have I done? It was this kind of... There's some other expletives, um, I, I said, because all of a sudden there was this fear. I had never been on a retreat and I wasn't one into football, footy camps, and that's because I never, when I played football, I was never into drinking and that kind, you know. Um, when I'd play, I'd usually go home at nine o'clock because that's when, um, you know, things used to get a bit chaotic. And, and that's fine, but it just wasn't my choice, you know. And so, there was this kind of thing about a retreat. I didn't know what we we're in for. I knew we we're going to do ice stuff. And now I knew there was breathing, but I didn't know and, and uh, what it was going to be like. And, and so there was all of a sudden, the, you know, I thought, oh, I can't go. I've got all these jobs. I've got to... It started to come up. All these things came up, you know. They started to present themselves. And this is, you know, mirroring me. And I knew I had to just do this. And I remember driving down on the, uh, the Tuesday afternoon, getting there, it was starting Wednesday and I was nervous in the car and I had someone in the car with me, um, I had a few mates because they came from the gym, there's about three three mates that came from the gym and I was pretty nervous because I, so I knew there was going to be a shift, I knew there was going to be a shift and I remember just before, we, we met at the gym beforehand and um, one of my other good mates that couldn't come, is an instructor there, Anthony, and Anthony said, I was going to have a nervous wee, you know, before we're driving down the coast. And uh, he said, something's going to happen, Mark. I said, Anthony, I know. He said, there's going to be a change. And he picked up on my energy. And, well, there was, mate, you know. And um, we drove down there, down, down the coast. And, and then we started, the next morning, we just started breathing, you know. And, and I look, I'd never laid down on the floor with a group of people, little, you know, like that was all new to me, Step, laying beside another bloke. And, and there were men and women there, but that kind of thing and, and breathing and all this kind of stuff, you know. And, and so that was a challenge for me. All these things I, I had, uh, you know, I had put around me as a shield to protect my authentic self because I didn't want to be vulnerable in public because that's a sign of weakness. That's how I've been brought, not by my family, but, you know, through through growing up, football club, you know, cricket clubs, bar, all that kind of stuff on how a man is portrayed and what masculine, masculinity looks like, mate. And so here I am just kind of, you know, with the, with the, with the, uh, with the wall. And I, I, I like to, you know, talk about, well, well you know, um, give the uh, analogy, you know, like being the building trade. I, I've, ha I've been laying a brick wall for my life, you know, and putting a shield up. The cement's pretty dry. So for me to let go, I need a jackhammer, mate. I need a fucking jackhammer and I'm going to bam, bam, bam and, and break the wall down. And so that's what I needed, mate. And that's what I got, mate. That's what happened. You know, we, you know, we started to breathe. And in that first, that first day, I didn't know. I thought, geez, this is interesting. I haven't felt like this with breathing before. What's that? Holding back, holding back. And then something, I don't know, just let go, I let go, mate. Something, I thought, well, I'm here. 
I'm just going to let go. And I did. And then the Coke bottle, mate, woof, shot off. And it was like I dealt with stuff, see? I dealt with stuff through my life, 50. Put it in the filing cabinet, mate, deep below, you know, and just file it off there. And then um, I've dealt with it, you know, which is not the way to go, of course. And, um, and then when that time came, that was it. And um, cried for five days, mate. But it was five days and it was deep. It was deep, you know, deep, uh, I'm not going to say grief, but just deep, deep, deep emotion. I'll say deep emotion, you know, that I'd been holding on all this time that only I, you know, that was around that brick wall. But because that jackhammer came along, and I got a hand on that jackham. I thought, fuck this. I'm going to push through this. And I'd like, step through, mate. You know? Um, and I'm, and up that first day, Ash, after the first day, or that first breathing session, the first thing I thought, well, what are they going to think of me, mate? What are they going to think of me, you know? And these people all got around me. And that was just... Uh, It was so I can I still remember that that exact time, you know, like it was beautiful. August 2016 changed my life. Five days in August, mate. And it went on from there, you know. Um and I just re I realized that I'm gonna be myself. That's and you know, and of that five, I remember on the fifth day, on the fifth day, um it was like I marks crying again you know at the back there you know that's fine you know <laughs> but it was like it was, what it was like ash is like you know i've climbed this beanstalk mate right i've climbed up the beanstalk and i've got up the top there and there's this there's this big door this big giant door and me being a builder and i like recycle material as you know building out of big old bridge timbers and everything there was this big door these big hinges and these you know these big beautiful big handmade steel hinges and as the door, I just, the door wasn't locked, mate. It was just open a little bit. And I thought, oh, I can't fit through. I'm just going to push it. And I stepped through. And, uh, yeah, it's bloody great. And, and it comes with its, it still comes with its bloody, it's not easy. It's not plain sailing, but I think that's what happens sometimes. We get caught up in being in self-pilot, you know, autopilot. And because we, we've been doing it over and over again, it's something easy, which, you know, I think we need to give other things a go, mate, you know. If it makes us feel uncomfortable, we'll give it a crack because I tell you, on the other side, there's magic, mate. Isn't there? Absolutely there is. Hey? Absolutely there is. It's in, it's incredible, really, isn't it? How you know that those five days, and as you said, they changed your life. And the reason why it wasn't like you took some magic pill or something, you know, transformed forever. It was actually just being with yourself and finally coming back to yourself. You know, busting through, as you said, that big brick wall. But on the other side of it was actually really you, really. Why? Yeah, why? Yeah. Sorry, Ash. Go on. Why do you think? it's so hard for us as a society to to be with ourselves or to let that wall come down or especially you know um, before we press record on this we talked about men specifically and um men's health month why do you feel like it's so hard for men to show that vulnerability or to to focus on you know their mental health and actually let themselves actually seem like human beings sometimes I think because, Ash, especially in my age, I'm 56 now, you know, and I think that, and it's getting better. I reckon it's getting more accepted. But, you know, there's this, there's this thing around what masculinity looks like and how we need to, you know, conduct ourselves in public, if you, you know, because, you know, there's times, and I haven't heard it as much now, but, you know, like, you know, there might be, uh, you know a, a father and he's trying to do the we're all trying to do our best mate you know they might have a his son he's crying and he'll say to him, you know public he'll say basically you know uh, i'll give you something to cry about don't you cry i'll give you something to cry about you know those kind of things you know and i think there's this 
is this thing, um, this uh, conditioning that we're brought up with on how we need to behave because, like, you know, on the foot, and look, the thing is on a footy ground, you know, in business, there are times when you need to have the wall. You can't always be open either, you know, but there's got to be balance, you know. And I think if you, you know, you've got to be able to say to your mate you love him and, and tell your mate you love him and just be vulnerable, but it, it's, it's, it's viewed on a sign of weakness. It's viewed on a sign of weakness and it's not, and, you know, and, you know, and then we see all this stuff on our social media, you know, um, and people, I don't know whether they've been all, they're authentic, you know, they're, they're looking at this stuff and mimicking potentially because they, they're concerned about, you know, how they're viewed with, you know, with their peers. Um, and I think, and I think sitting in silence, you know, in nature and being silent is a really good thing. Um, and being with yourself and your thoughts. Hmm. How, you know, you and I, we've, we've run many a retreat now and you, you initially, when you went to that Wim Hof five for five days, that was a retreat in and of itself. And as we know, they can be pretty profound experiences. You know, you, you undertake this almost intention to, to take a bit of a journey of some sort. How did you integrate that when you came back to real life? You know, how did Plumber Mark start, not lose, you know, what he had found during those five days? Good question, mate. Well, I tell you, this is what I learned, okay? And I didn't know this until a couple of years later. And I look back, because this is what I start, I've started to do since then, is looking back at, at and joining the dots. Because looking back is a negative thing. It's like joining the dots and seeing where you've come. And I did a, um, with Anna Rubenstein, I, I did a rite of passage institute um, up in uh, Byron Bay, the first level of that. And it explained about, you know, rites of passage. And, and, um, and for me, I always thought that a rite of passage was from, from childhood to adulthood, but it's actually all through your life. There are stages all through your life. And when I look back on this, and what we try to do here as well, and we base our work on that, is that the integration's a hard bit, like you just said, and you need a community around you, right? And for me, I saw that I went on this right a passage, you know, for five days, and when I came back, my rite of passage was to become an elder. Yes, I'd, I'd moved through that that um, social staircase or that social structure with the staircase, and I'm walking up it, and there's all these stages. And I've gone to that elder stage, right? And um, oh, geez, I've lost the train of thought. Sorry, I um, that's right. And so, what's really important when you, when you have when you go through a stage in your life that you have community support around you. And so the true, for me, when I look at this, my rite of passage was going to this place for five days. And then I had this community at this gym that I went back to that were there to support. So the most important thing is getting, being a part of a community, being a part of a community that can support you and, and this, is, this is easier said than done, but find the community that will support you to go to that next phase and not say, what are you doing, Mark, for fuck's sake, right? They're supporting your, you and not feeling um, and, and just being yeah, supportive and, um, and like they've got your back. And that's what, they were, that's what it was. I could have conversations, you know, um, there was emotion still there. There was emotion there for about a month after for me, you know, um, and I felt... It's support, it's community, mate. It's getting being a part of the community, Ash, that can support you when you need the change. Because that's what a lot of things are as well. We won't, if you haven't got, like, for example, if you haven't got the right community and I'm going through this change, Mark, what the fuck are you doing? Going back to work, all the, you know, and you get challenged, you know, through the old stuff again, because, you know, because the community are there for you, they're there to help you. They're, they're there for the ride, for the journey. Yeah, and I'm, is that, is that, I know. 
yeah I mean yeah absolutely when you were talking there you know about when you were in at the Wim Hof retreat and you you've talked about you know how you were crying and that group came around and they supported you and they held you I mean what what's what's interesting for me is uh, throughout my own journey I know community has been an incredibly massive part of that but for so long and for so many people I know, and in my own experience, you know, I was surrounded by people all the time, but I always felt incredibly lonely. But it's actually finding the right kind of people, you know, who are your people, that Mm. when you actually go actively searching for them, rather than the people who just find yourself around by default, that's what makes all the difference. So I'd love to hear a little bit more about what does community mean to you and what does how does community differ from just a group of people that are physically in your space? Well, they say that, you know, you, they, they, they say that you can have the, the best diet in the world. You can have, you know, you can run every day. You can be active. You can do all these things, but it's a community to make the commute. Now, I know this is probably not going to go out today, but it's, it's rhyming Friday for me, right? Mm-hmm. But Friday. And community Boosts immunity, mate. You like that one? I loved it. There you go. <laughs> so um, that's really important, Ash. You know, the importance of community. And as I said, they've, they've found that, you know, someone can be lonely um, and do all those other things, all those other more modalities, but they need to have a, a strong a, a support of a community around them. And I reckon what happens with life if you go searching, you will find that. Very you go true. searching for it, you know. Um, and you've got to start to become and sit in the stillness and and and, and it's a bit of it's a, I don't want to sound like it's kind of fluffy because I like fluffy, but I'm trying to be real here too, you know. And I think you need to be if we if you're if if you're Intention is that you want to be a part and you know, a community. You will feel the intention, and you will move towards that. I strongly feel that. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Have I yes. answered that? Question yeah, absolutely. Not? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. You know? uh, that and that's it. I think when you have that intention to go and try and find your people, you know, I think as you said, and that has been my experience too. That once that intention is there you start noticing the people that are around you do start changing and for the better, you know, and that the people, whether it is your family or whether it is the wider community who are like-minded people all with a common shared purpose, you know, that have each other's interests at heart and are there for you no matter what, you know, whatever way you're showing up, whether you're a 10 mark or a two mark, it doesn't matter. It just matters that you're there. It's interesting Ash, from that that five days I spent in, you know, 2016, I became close with a lot of those people there. Like I'm still seeing them regularly now, or a lot of the interstate, but we keep, you know, we're always um, talking, uh, you know, or messaging one another, checking up, which is which is beautiful, you know, and um, it's great. Can I say? How do you um, check in with yourself? How do you do that? Good question. That's where I'm probably feeling the, the, the how I was feeling when you asked me earlier on. You know, um, the uh, how, the six out of ten. I'm trying to how I check in with myself. I, well, I like to when my head's not full because I'm, I'm still trying to create this space here. And you know, we live here um, off grid here, and I can see work the whole time, and it's really hard to to, to to, to create that space for, you know, myself, I need to get in the ice bath. I need to get in the cold. And then, then even, you know, like there's sometimes I get the shadow. I won't go into dates, you know, I don't need to. All these things, I, you need to, we need to create, which I'm, I'm still working on. I, I train every day with, the, well, four days a week, I train with the weights. So I'm still um, working through, what's perfect for me. The weights are, for sure. There's some other things I need to, and obviously the cold, because I feel so energised up with cold therapy, you know, it's beautiful. 
Um, the thing is, at the moment, our, our life with Julie and I is an ice bath, really. Um, we are, It's pretty cool in the shed here. We've got air pissing through the doors, sides through the doors. <laughs> so um, our, our little pot belly, as you know it, it's, it gets warm in here with an event. But, you know, day to day, I need to probably get something cranking there. So when I get, get in the ice, I can warm up nicely back inside, you know. So, yeah, I'm... Um, that's what I need to do. And, and and that quiet time and breathing, you know, quiet time in nature um, and walking, walking, which at the moment, you know, I've been building stuff, bits and pieces. And see, see, Ash, I've probably segue, but for me, I always thought for me, once I'd taken this move in 2016, you know, I decided, you know, in the middle of that retreat, um, through that period, halfway through, I said to a mate of mine, I'm going to open a, a retreat space. I know what it's going to be, Geordie. I can see it, mate. That's what it's going to be. And I was really excited about it, you know. Um, and um, I'm just, it's, it's a lot of things coming to my mind, at the moment, mate, you know. Have I done the, you know, it's, it's always a constant battle with you I've done the right thing you know um and I feel like when the people are here giving us energy because for a couple of years there was nothing happening here because of COVID and all the were kangaroos and crickets you know at night time I looked down the valley and I thought fuck what have I done um there was no energy of, of the people coming you know um and it's that silence that I need you know hmm. it is I, I, it's I've jumped around a bit, a fair bit there because my mind's. Um, hmm. Well, you're just speaking your truth. You're speaking yeah, what just, you're hmm. It is, it's hard. It's hard. And especially when so much of the work that you do revolves around other people, you know, and, and community. Hmm. And those times and spaces in between when it's just you alone in your thoughts, like it can be a hard place to be for any of us, whether you're up there, whether you're surrounded by people and the busyness and the noise down here where I am you know being alone with yourself can be difficult you know that inner critic does it's can sometimes be very loud yeah well it has well that's right it, it, you know it's one of those things that has been in the last you know f f a few you know probably well as I said that's what I was going to say is that I always thought that when I was going to build this retreat space that the, I'll only use my building knowledge, you know, for for building this space and, and plumbing, whatever you know I've learned over the past, which I'm very grateful for. But to go back because the retreat we can't run and do you know plumbing back on the tools for people, it was a it was for me it was a big hurdle because it was like it was a failure, it was a total abject abject failure on my behalf, and. I had to get around that and realise that, no, that's full mark because, you know, I've been great and I've realised I started to feel grateful about those things, you know, is that I've learned all this so what I can do now, you know, it's all a part of it and that's keeping the dream alive. But I can tell you, for because I was travelling around Australia doing ice bath sessions and it was great, you know, and meeting all these people and all of a sudden, Yes, that we're back, bang, you know, two years, just the switches or the rug pulled out from under your feet, mate. And then that's when the hard bit is. So it's trying to get that, that impetus again um, and keep pushing. And, um, and that's, um, that's one thing for me too, Ash. I've all, that's the other thing I think, which is really important is that, you know, I saw, you know, my, for 30 years, I'd sign a contract, a start date and an end date. And, I was on the definite path, not the infinite path. This is the other thing. So it was like, if I start this date and, I, and when, if I don't finish by that date, there's consequences, mate, obviously financial, you know? And I didn't care about the journey in the middle. I was just pushing and pushing and pushing. And I know that's my weakness is I need to enjoy the journey. And so that's what I know that one of the things I'm getting taught now is it's about the journey, mate. Mm -hmm. And that's so important. And if you can sit there and look back on the journey and, and have some time that you're not doing anything 
and enjoying that part, you know? Absolutely. If you're constantly focused on the destination, you miss out on everything else. Because those doors open, remember, those little doors keep coming, they'll open. But now I'm, I'm aware of those doors. You know, I'm, I'm fully aware. Yeah. And when I sat, when, when COVID hit and uh, we were ready to go and, you know, we had first three, obviously, retreats um, days, they were cancelled and, and um, I just started to think, and I started to think, what have I done wrong? What's happened? Um, and then I started to focus on the people that I met and, or, and came into my life since 2016. And um, I started to focus on that and all the other things. And then I started to look at those things and, and looking back, joining the dots. And then I started to, I started to feel better, you know, it's because, well, my life's changed and all these beautiful people that I've met, because that's what I like to do. I'm a connection person, mate, you know? Um, and I remember I had problems. Um, I'd go to the, uh, People would ask me, well, what's your, what's your occupation? Because I've, I've written plumber since I was at uh, 24, mate. I've written plumber. Um, and then I went, went, and went to Melbourne, had to go and see my, my daughter, had to go and see the doctor. And anyway, I thought I'd just go and see him as a mate, a checkup, you know. And anyway, occupation come up and it just came out and it was facilitator of change. And I went, yes, I just wrote it. So finally, that's what it is, you know. So... Interesting, mate. But I feel guilty a lot of time, though, because I think, well, I'm not, you know, I, I might say one thing, and I'm not here to tell people what to do. I'm just, we're just sharing. It's all about sharing with people because there's always, there's plenty of stuff telling us what to do and make us feel pretty average, you know. Um, and so it's just to facilitate a safe space in nature for you to be yourself, mate. No judgment. If that's what we can, if that's what we can provide, Ash, a safe space in nature with no judgment, mate. How good would that be? How good would that be if there was no judgment? And for you to just be yourself, because I think so much of life we spend trying to work towards some different version of ourselves some better bigger bolder whatever it might be that the thing with that is when we're all and you know I'm all for growth and personal growth is a huge interest of mine and something that I've been on my own journey but I think where we get to where we get caught up and in trouble is thinking that that version has to be something completely different whereas most of the time where the real challenge lies is just being more okay with who we actually are. Yeah. And if we could all learn to do that, what a different, different world it would be. Yes, mate. Yeah, I agree for sure. So some of the, I guess, the ways that you support yourself when, you know, you said it might be a, a five or a, even on a 10 day when you know that, things that help you to feel at your best, the best version of you, you know, the breath work, the ice baths, the cold water therapy. The hugging Why is people. No, the hugging, hugging of people. people. It's the hugging. It is the, above all else, it's the hugging, mate. Mm. That is the best part. I like to go into uh, town. You know, there's a, uh, a harvest, there's a cafe there, it's great, it's got a great place and, that's where the people. That's where the community. I feel you know connected to and seeing and saying hello and and talking to people. That's fucking good medicine, mate. That is the best medicine. Beyond anything, mate. Is that? Sorry, Ash. I had to just. I could just feel when you said that. Now I was, I was thinking about that. And I fucking love hugging, mate. You know, it's because you can feel it's that energy and what happens. What happens with that? It's the oxytocin release. It's great. It's, it's as good as any, like coffee or whatever, you know, ice bath. If you can have an ice bath and then hug someone, oh, mate, <laughs> and sit in front of a fire and have a chat, bloody beautiful. Priceless, mate. The best. It is it's the true. Best. It's true, and especially in such a disconnected world and a world that's so filled with, you know, 
we're lucky that we can we can have a chat today but it is still over technology it's it doesn't beat you know face-to-face real human connection that's right mate exactly Mm. but you mentioned there like say with the hugging the oxytocin release you know the the happy hormones what is it that happens with cold water therapy or breath work or ice baths for anyone who might be listening or watching that's wondering why the hell is everyone banging on about this you know what what is it that it actually does like why do people feel so good because it actually because it activates the vagus nerve, mate, and puts us into that parasympathetic state. That's why I'm in. Oh, we do plenty of I'm in here. Whistling is another thing. If I'm feeling, that's another thing what I'll do. I'll whistle, I'll hum. It's been proven scientifically. That tiny bird, I go on about this, that tiny hummingbird that resonates 50 hertz and lives... I always get this balls up. It lives five times the length of the life it should do with an animal that small with the vibration so high. But they've found that it's a vibration of this tiny hummingbird. That's why it's giving it longevity. And all these things, hugging, oming, ice bath, breathing, we get into that state where we activate the vagus nerve and the vagus nerve runs down the spinal column. And there's nothing in the body that, 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 the, vagus nerve, that, that the vagus nerve doesn't know what's going on. And we get, when we get into that state, beautiful, mate. Hey, that, and so that's what's happening. That's what's happening. Getting the cold water, even if you, if you don't want to, it's a bit intense this time of year to get in an ice bath or shit in the shower. Even if you just put your face in cold water, Get the face in cold water. There you go, mate. Does that answer it? It does. It yeah. does. Um, what difference does it make to you in your own life? If I do those things, mm-hmm. happy, happiness. Happiness. And I think when we're happy, People are happy, you know, like, because then what happens to your energy? It's about the energy. See, we're all energy. And it's about, you know, um, if, if, you're, if you're letting out good energy, people get attracted to, to your energy. And that's what's really important, you know. It's that high vibration. And look, mostly, most of the time, I, I, I'd like to say that, you know, my vibration is pretty high because I, 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 uh, I know I feel better if I sit in that state, you know, and, 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 and I try, and what I try to do, and one one of those times, you know, like I remember when we were building, when we started building, when we first had the land, and we were living uh, off site, and we were doing some work here, and I'd every morning, my vibe, you know, I was so excited to get to that front gate and, and uh, open the gate, and I had I had sometimes tears, you know, that excitement, it's like running on the footy ground, the grand final, mate, the hair standing up on the back of my neck, and there was this, yes, I'm here, and I, and and I kept saying it's okay. I'm not going anywhere. I'm here. I'm here to do this. And I'm fucking excited about it, mate. You know, so um, I think that's another thing what we need to do is write a list down of things that excite you and try to do those. Don't you think? Yeah, absolutely. You know, life's too short. Yeah, yeah. And they don't have to be, you know, okay, going over. It could be just little daily things. You know, if I had the time now, what would it be? You know, um, that ex- what, what excites me? What excites you? Do you have any daily non-negotiables, things that you put into your day that you just couldn't be without anymore? Yeah, I like look, training, <laughs> weights, because that's also after the, after the session. Sometimes I think, oh, I've got, what happens a lot of times, I've got too much on. Oh, I've got to train as well. You know, all these things. But I know that's a non-negotiable for me. It has been for years to the point where it has given Julie and I our relationship a bit, bit of angst. Hasn't it, Julie? Yep. Yep, that, yep, that was quick. You know, that I've always had to train. Even I'm talking about, see, Julie and I have been married for how long, Jewel? 30 years. 30 years. Wow. Um, 32 years. <laughs> and there's some times early on where, we, you know, um, that happened. I always had to make sure 
I trained because I felt – so that's a non-negotiable for me. And I noticed even if I've been working physically, digging all day here or doing something, um, I still feel that that's a non-negotiable non for me because I feel, that's how I, how I feel after it, you know. There's that. I need to um, – One thing I probably need to do, and, and I hear a lot of people talking about it. I don't, I don't know if it's my um, my uh, age potentially. I don't know, but journaling. I probably need to start doing that. And I don't. I, th I just. I don't do that. I should do that. Um, yeah. And try to hug people. Mm. I think if you can hug people, that's a, if I can, I've just got to watch it because, you know, unfortunately, you know. People, no, well, not, not. I mean, it's not everyone, of course, but you just got to watch who you hug, of course, because you can get yourself in the shit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. you know? So, if if someone's listening to this who is in a place where you know they're not doing so great, or they've got a lot on, they're feeling a bit overwhelmed, um, they're feeling a bit stuck or stagnant. How, what, what advice would you give to them or what would you tell them to try and incorporate or to help them take back their own mind? Okay. So for me, it's a good question. For me, when I've been, when I was building stuff here, there's a lot of stuff happening, even now still happening. And it's like, what do I do? The best way, and I'm going to put it in, in building forms, put the nail bag on, mate. Put the nail bag on, put a hammer put my hammer on and start doing something, do something, move. Even if you just go for a walk, just go for a walk. That's what I reckon that's a great thing. If you could just go for a walk and focus on your breathing, just focus on your breathings. And that is a non-negotiable um, nasal breathing for me. Um, I try to do that all the time now, focus on how I'm breathing because that will affect your mind and body state so i would think but if we can and by putting them a nail bag on it's like just go for a walk just go for a walk mate or sit there and just breathe and it's walking moving getting a bit of blood flow mate getting blood flow through the body mm. that's what i would say Beautiful. If you can have a cold shower, if you might want to, that's fine. Have a warm shower first and then just finish off 10 seconds of cold, mate. Just try 10 seconds on your head and go for a walk. Put your face in the bowl of water and then go for a walk. Start up. I mean, it doesn't matter what you sound like. It's a vibration. Oh. And I know I don't do it properly because there's actually a way, but I just feel the humming, how good it makes you feel. And it might sound a bit out there. What do you got to lose, mate? Hey? Yeah. I think that's the key. Well, as you said there, it's like now to say feel. But after you keep checking in and notice how you feel after you do these things. And it's with that, when you do notice like, oh, I, f I feel much better or I feel alive or I feel really good, you know, that's that positive reinforcement to to maybe put the nail bag on the next day and it's maybe good. get the hammer out the next day. And then maybe the day after that and just one step at a time, you know, it doesn't have, I think when people think of well being and mental health or ways to support themselves, they feel like, it's nearly in the too hard basket. I don't have time or you know what it might be, but it's little steps off in and that equals a lot. You know, just as you said, put that nail bag on one day to the next. Good, mate. And then over time you look back, as you said, and you look back and you know, all the the all how you how you felt now versus how you felt yesterday or the day before. And some days that might be worse, some days that might be better. But at least, you know, you're putting one foot in front of the other. You're just putting that nail bag on and taking the very next step because that's all we can do. Yep, that's exactly right, Ash. So how can people, if they're listening or watching to this, find out more about you and about the incredible work that you do as a facilitator of change? Well, there you go. You get, hey, 
Well, they listen. Can, yeah, they're great, mate. Well, they can go to my website, which is www.mark, M A R K, Clua.com. They can visit the website. They can alternatively, they can go to my Instagram, which is mark.tiger.clua and uh, reach out, direct message me. We can have a chat. I always like to have a chat. Um, cool. I'm, I'm in the process of doing some other things. I, I, I'd love to get a YouTube channel. I'm just trying to work out how to, how to bloody do that. So, <laughs> you know, get all these things happening um, and just connect. And I think sometimes it's just put the nail bag on. Put the nail bag on. It could be one little thing. Like Jordan Peterson, I, I read something this morning. If we can improve 1% per week, I think he said, 1% a week, 1%. Just do the one percenters if you can. It might be one week, 1%. Next week, next week you might you might do it. You might stay at that point. And then you might improve the week after another percent. No, no pressure. I think that's the thing, mate. There's a lot of shit happening. There's a lot of stuff happening in Ash, and I think where there's too many things, you don't do them. Start with one. Put the nail bag on first. The last thing you need is to put to be harder on ourselves because I think we do enough of that. That's right. Mm. So before we go, do you have an ask? Is there something that we can help you with? Is there? Yes. Something that we can help you with? Yes, there is. There's always something, mate. Hey, <laughs> what I, I look for me, the, the, um, what makes me feel good is having people here. It's that exchange of energy. So, and and to spread, you know, what you're what you're doing. With all these good people, we're all trying, you know, our best, and it's just all oh, we just want to come together. That's all I want to do is bring people together. And let go, mate. I suppose, and just give give, give it a crack. But I would, that for for me, one of the greatest things for me, oops, is to have people here and grow the community. And just keep growing it, mate. Uh, what what did you say again? For our final parting words, is the rhyming Friday for today? Community is immunity. Is it? <clears throat> well, I, I've nearly got this. It's kind of. Take the opportunity and be part of a community because I tell you what, it'll boost your, your immunity. You like that? Love it. Love it'll probably it. be different today when I post it, but there you go. But I reckon that sounds all right, mate. <laughs> you like that, Jill? <laughs> there you go, mate. So I just like, because I say to Julie, when she films me, I say, don't turn the camera off because anything could happen. Because sometimes what will happen I like to be spontaneous. And then all of a sudden, she, I said, did you get that? No, I said, oh, stop filming. Don't stop filming, mate. But there, you, there you go. So that's what it is. There you go. Wise words as always. Thank you so much, Mark, for being part of Take Back Your Mind. As yeah. always, a pleasure to talk to you. And uh, you always leave me with a smile on my face, that's for sure. Good on you, mate. Thanks, Ash. <laughs> Great to see you again, mate. I'll... And what about our event, hey? Coming up. Come and see him. 26th of June. That's it, mate. You bloody beauty. <laughs> Can't wait. Yeah, good. See you, Ash. <laughs>